My son full of life. He was energetic. He was very athletic and outgoing. And he had one of those smiles that just made you want to forgive him even when he did the most uh, amazing or knuckleheaded things. Shock Trauma is the only freestanding trauma hospital in the United States and it provides care to more trauma victims than anyone else. I'm a director of traffic. I go out to every fatal crash scene. I see so many senseless deaths and uh, tragedies every day on our roadways and it's very frustrating. Well, I, th I think that motor vehicle collisions are to a large extent preventable and, and that's the most frustrating part of taking care of people like that. On October 20th, 2008 was just like any other day. Officers had been responding out to a, a serious crash. I put on my uniform and I went out to the crash scene. If you are properly restrained, it doesn't matter how you get hurt, your injuries are less if you have your seatbelt on. Well, when I got out there, uh, you could see all the uh, fire rescue and police vehicles out. The roadway was blocked. There was a fleet of ambulances out there. A 17-year-old driver who had his driver's license for only two weeks had loaded the car with five kids. He lost control of the vehicle and it slammed headway into a tree. The back seat passengers, two girls and my son Ryan, weren't wearing their seat belts. All the kids were seriously injured in the crash in different degrees, and my son lost his life. There's a common misconception that the back seat passenger is protected. For some reason, sometimes many people feel they don't need to wear a seat belt, and they're absolutely wrong. If you're not restrained, you become an object. So you are launched into the dashboard, the windshield, the door, or ejected and launched into space. And so all of that greatly magnifies the effect of the injury. Now, having done this job for over 20 years, we've been to shock trauma, I've been to hospitals hundreds of times. Uh, I saw the doctor come out of the elevator, and you could see in the doctor's eyes that he was coordinating what he was going to say prior to saying it. For us, uh, it's the worst part of the job because that didn't have to happen. And when we explained to them that it could have been prevented, it's shocking. I've seen families pass out as they're trying to process what's happened to their loved one. That's the hardest part of what I do. Now, Ryan had the misfortune of being uh, the son of two police officers. So I would have uh, bet that he was always wearing a seat belt, but on this tragic night, we recognized that he must have got in the uh, backseat of a car with his peers between two girls and failed to do what he used to always do, which was buckle his seatbelt. A momentary lapse caused him to lose his life. It takes less than a second to click it, and it's unfathomable for trauma surgeons when we see these patients coming in through our doors to say this could easily have been prevented. Seatbelts work. They work after you make a mistake. And we know that when they're worn and worn correctly, they will save your life and possibly prevent injury. We are all working towards zero deaths in Maryland because every life counts.